We've got the Corvette ZR1 uh, pace car this year and uh, 60th anniversary carbon top. I mean, this thing is an absolute beast. So we're on the apron here, exiting the pits. Um, we've got to stay inside the, the racing circuit, but we're in turn two on the apron. Um, normally here we're in third gear and actually almost full throttle trying to get as much speed as possible as we uh, head up and blend up onto the back straight. Here we rely on our spotters a little bit up in, uh, up in turn three and they'll clear us to make sure we can get to the outside of the circuit and uh, start preparing for turn three. So turn three, you usually want to have a bit of an early, early apex here I find and uh, get as close to the white line as possible. Start looking ahead to the uh, IMS logo on the wall as your sort of exiting point and start to roll it into turn four, which feels like the easiest corner on the track. Best passing zones are turn one and turn three. Um, usually because the speeds in uh, two and four are just slightly s slower than in one and three. So it's easier to get a run on guys coming onto the long straightaways. So turn one always feels like the narrowest corner. As we come down here, you've got all the grandstands, the pit wall and everything, and it's just a very narrow groove as you turn in. And uh, the line here is very important. You need to be uh, getting your apex right because it's really easy to have the car wash out wide and uh, push up towards the wall and the exit. So you wanna get your line really precise through turn one. Turn two, there's a little dip as you roll into turn two, which always makes the car sort of have a little wobble and then it sets and then you go through. And uh, another important corner because uh, coming up here on the back straight is where a lot of passing happens. I'm on the back straight right now, uh, long straightaway. Um, you're sort of checking your RPM, you know, often the wind here has a big effect on on the gearing so you're just checking that you got to stay in the in the gear that you're in or shift usually on the straight I'll drift down to the middle of the track a little bit and then come back up to the wall before turning in and give myself a nice line and wide arc to turn into the corner with and then just start looking at my apex feeling the white line here and then looking ahead to the exit to make sure that you know I've got my line good setting up for turn four and then, you know, your corner entries here. Everything you do is really smooth at this circuit. There are no quick movements or anything. So really smooth steering traces, having a real, really sensitive feel for where the car is. The grandstands are really only full on race day and uh, you do notice it for sure. If I'm under yellow, you know, under caution, we're just cruising around at this kind of speed. Um, you know, I'll look for the leaderboard on the, on the pylon of the Pagoda and sometimes see if uh, I can see what position I'm in. Otherwise, a quick question to Roger on the timing stand and, and those guys will let me know exactly where I'm standing. We uh, full throttle all the way around this track. Um, you know, when we're in traffic, sometimes we're breathing the throttle a little bit through the corners because you get the dirty air, the car wants to understeer a little bit. Top speeds are at the end of the front straight, at the end of the back straight, up in the you know, mid 220s to high 220s, um, and then we'll average a speed of, you know, six, seven mile an hour slower than what our top speed is. You know, Indianapolis is so unique, you know, it's a very smooth, very flat course, and it's the fastest one we go to, so you can't compare this circuit to any other track. It's almost like going through really high speed corners on a road course, but with no downforce because uh, we run the wing so laid back here. The car is, is always in a constant state of just floating through the corners. Um, at least that's sort of the way you want it to be fast around this place. So um, there's no other track that can prepare you for Indianapolis apart from being here in this exact place.